Okay, hi guys and welcome to the show and today we are reviewing an extremely cool watch indeed. This is the Bugatti Aerolith Chronograph from Parmigiani Florier. Now this review came about as a result of the competition and I'm going to give away the Seiko 5 Dive Star watch that I promised to Alfredo who uh, Alfredo very kindly uh, wrote to Parmigiani and they responded and hence uh, this uh, review so absolutely fantastic now guys do stay tuned uh, expect lots more giveaways and lots more watch brands uh, that you haven't seen before now of course before I get into this review I've got to do my wristwatch check and I'm wearing my darling little Amiga from World War II pilot's watch yeah I'm still uh... <laughs> absolutely besotted with it uh, and it came on this Phoenix NATO strap this is actually a um, mil spec NATO strap in Admiralty grey very very I mean one of the earliest colors that the NATO strap uh, came in I believe so um, although a little bit anachronistic for the World War II period well very an anachronistic uh, I think it matches the pilot watch beautifully. Anyway, let's commence with the review. So we should do a little bit of background on Parmigiani because it's a very interesting brand. Now they're relatively new, founded in 1996 in Florier, as the name suggests, by Michel Parmigiani. Although founded in the mid 90s, they are still a privately held company and have been making strides uh, in the higher end luxury kind of range. I mean, some really beautifully made watches. He conceived of the brand as far back as 1976 through his work restoring uh, watchmaking artifacts and his detailed knowledge of historical mechanical clocks and watches. So I guess it was just a logical progression for him to finally, you know, start a watch brand. Now what is uh, wonderful about Parmigiani is they really are a fantastic example of a luxury brand. All the watches are handmade and in order to create exclusivity, only a few thousand pieces are produced every year. They have several lines, but their most uh, probably famous line of watches so far has got to be the, uh, the watches they have made in partnership with the iconic supercar brand Bugatti. In 2016 they presented the Senfine concept housing a new escapement taking advantage of the properties of silicon flat springs. Uh, this was a revolutionary concept that uses um, an oscillator with a high frequency at a low amplitude for enhanced uh, precision and power reserve. So very impressive. Also it's got to be noted that in 2016 Six, they won the award for the best uh, watch of the year from the Japanese press. Now this was the Bugatti 370 uh, which was based on the Veyron supercar. Now the watch we're looking at today again is inspired by probably an even more mythical um, Bugatti. Now Bugatti is or was a French car manufacturer of high performance automobiles founded all the way back in 1909 by Italian born Ettore Bugatti and they were known specifically for the style designs of their masterpieces. The brand is now part of the Volkswagen group since I believe from about 1998. But way back in 1935 Bugatti released the Aerolith. Now the Aerolith is a historical icon for the brand and perhaps the world's most mysterious car. And despite being breathtakingly beautiful, I mean really embodying the style of the age, uh, it was probably a little bit too progressive for its time. It was crafted from highly flammable magnesium alloy so the chassis had to be riveted on the outside of the car. It also had a new double uh, over head cam engine. It was the most advanced car in the world at that time but the public wasn't really ready for it and has now become legendary as it's extremely rare. Parmigiani uh, took a lot of inspiration from this car and I think they did an absolutely sterling job as we'll see in a moment. So first of all we should really get the basic specifications out the way. So diameter we're looking at 41 almost 41 millimeters. The height is 12 and a half lug to lug we're looking at 47 and lug width we're looking at quite a wide 23. This watch is made entirely from titanium uh, which I, I gotta say at first glance I thought it was stainless steel because usually with titanium it's a little bit of a darker uh, metal but what they've done to this uh, watch is just astounding. Now it comes on a beautiful calf 
leather strap which has this kind of diamond pattern and apparently the inspiration was uh, from the interior of the Bugatti we get certain sections on the case in a reverse kind of inverted hobnail effect we have these absolutely striking teardrop shaped lugs which are taken straight from the curves of the aerolith in fact if you were to pop some wheels on this it would look like a car from the side the pushers are actually on the left this time and incorporated into the lugs which i just think is is a really nice touch it keeps the line and and balance of the watch and is extremely stylish at first i i was looking for them over here and then when i first got the watch and then i realized they were on this side you almost don't notice it and it, it keeps a uh, this beautiful kind of aerodynamic shape and they mirror or echo the shape of the lugs beautifully I mean absolutely gorgeous the crown is at the three o'clock we of course get a signed crown it's not a screw down we have I think about 30 meters water resistance so to engage the chronograph we press the bottom pusher and off it goes we get a by compacts layout with the sub dials the seconds on the left for the main time and then the 30 minute counter on the right now you'll notice this incredibly complex looking dial there's a coherent color scheme repeated throughout the watch of this very particular blue and red these are of course the signature colors of Bugatti the blue is actually called Bugatti blue in honor of the brand. You could almost call it uh, like a lighter Prussian blue or a mineral blue. It's very fun and playful. We get an applied little Bugatti logo and then the date at the six o'clock. The dial really is a couple of auto. It's staggeringly beautiful. There's a lot going on here. And in fact, the dial is all laser etched, as is the case. The case uses the latest laser technology to apply the finishing beyond the capability of conventional machining. Just a wonderful mixture of different polishing. I've never seen titanium to, to this degree. It really is luxurious and extremely high quality. We have a contrasting brush and then high polished that accentuate these beautiful shapes the edges are just so crisp then quite a typical high polished bezel it has an extremely subtle domed sapphire glass uh, which does have anti-reflective coating so this is no ordinary chronograph this is actually a flyback chronograph and what that essentially means is that you can use the reset function without the need to first stop the chronograph uh, so it sounds relatively simple, but um, mechanically it's, it's obviously a lot more challenging. So if we start the chronograph, the bottom pusher is for stop start, the top one is for reset. We can just reset without having to stop, which is just wonderful. The magic truly is in that dial. So we have delta shaped hands, which are almost like lance hands but they are semi skeletonized towards the center this allowing you to read the sub dials as they pass them a subtle touch but really nicely done the applied markers have luminescence they are arrow head shaped we also have a double tachymeter on the inside which has kilometers an hour indications in red and the miles per hour are in blue again in the signature Bugatti red and blue colors and you can tell the different textures have been wonderfully crafted we have these concentric circles on the sub dials this diamond effect on the main dial then to contrast the different scales on the outside of the dial one is slightly kind of matte and then the next is uh, with the concentric circles again the scales are incredibly delicate but very beautifully printed the color scheme again is on the main second hand of the chronograph with the counterbalance in blue the tip is red entirely from the center to almost the edge of the dial and then we have another skeletonized hand that passes the inner scales of that sub dial allowing you to read kilometers and miles per hour specifically obviously for racing the date wheel is in a very subdued silver again kind of echoing the texture of the titanium 
And then the subdial of the main time towards the left is a double hand, very simple, but again, to differentiate it from the chronograph hands of the subdial and main seconds. The dial is this wonderful matte black, but because of that three-dimensional texture to the diamond pattern, it plays with the light wonderfully. And at different angles, it kind of glistens and then becomes quite matte it's it, it almost looks like leather you know and i think the fact that they repeated it on the strap is just a, a really nice touch the buckle again we have the same pattern with the permigiani logo on it the screws for the folding buckle are actually buttons that allow you to open it and on the inside of the uh, folding clasp or buckle i should say you can see the unpolished texture of titanium. So it just goes to illustrate how much polishing and, and, and work has really gone into this case. The strap is, as you would imagine, extremely luxurious, very thick and substantial. I like that they've kept the stitching on the outside black, uh, not to draw too much attention away from all the action that is going on on the dial. Now on the back of the watch we have display back. The case back is screwed in. You can see the little screws there. I almost want to say to mimic the rivets of the Aerolift car, but not quite, but, but you do get that mechanical kind of look to it. Now what is fantastic is the movement inside. It is totally proprietary in-house movement made by Parmigiani. So this is the caliber PF335. And as you can see by that stunning rotor there with a skeletonized rotor signed with the logo, remarkably thin. It is of course automatic. It operates at 28,800 vibrations an hour. It has a 50 hour power reserve and has a staggering 68 joules. It's comprised of 311 components. The accuracy is within cask, a wonderful amount of decoration. We get Cote de Genève uh, finishing on the top and then right behind in the balance wheel you can see the pelage work, blued screws. So no expense has been spared when it comes to the movement. And there's a even a little window cut into the back of the movement there so you could just see some of that wonderful chronograph uh, gears there now if we pull out the crown as you can see by the seconds it is of course hackable and if we pop it all the way back in off it goes we have manual wind <laughs> i wouldn't expect anything else also if we pull it out to the first position you can see by the date at the six o'clock it has quick set. Now, as you guys know, the Bugatti was a car from the 1930s in the height of the Art Deco period. If you know anything about Art Deco, most Art Deco designs, especially when it comes to cars and architecture, there's always a strong line of symmetry. So I think the balance is crucial. Style, especially from that period, was always integral. And as a luxury timepiece, it exudes style without a doubt. It really has a class of its own. Um, so let's pop this bad boy on the wrist and see how it wears. As you guys know, I have a very small wrist, but even for my wrist, because of those teardrop lugs, it just hugs the wrist beautifully. The weight is about 84 grams, uh, which is extremely light, especially for something as complex as a chronograph, but again, it is titanium. My only issue is that it is a little bit difficult to read. Uh, the scales are so small, um, it's, you really have to kind of look at it for a little while. Um, it's quite busy, but it's, <laughs> it's such a charmer, I'm willing to forgive it. So anyway, um, so there you go. So let's summarize the watch. So for me, the strength of this watch has got to be its uniqueness. It's so distinctive. It's unlike anything I've experienced before. I feel it's quite special being in titanium and definitely makes sense. Although at first I, I was a little shocked. You always are a little shocked with titanium watches because they just are so light. Unfortunately, we do equate a light watch with um, cheapness, but this is not cheap at all. This feels like a real high-end luxury watch. The attention to detail, the craftsmanship, uh, everything from the in-house movement to the polishing, 
it's all first class. I mean, this watch is a true luxury watch. I also love the fact it's different. I love the fact that it's got a personality and it's inspired by something just so beautiful. Uh, the watch does the original car justice. It's a classic in the making. I feel that it's a timeless design. It's not perfect, and we'll discuss that in just a moment, but it is very tastefully done. I, I like the playful colors. I love how they've utilized these colors into the dial design. I also think it's a nice alternative to, let's say, a Rolex Daytona or perhaps a Zenith El Primero, these kind of chronographs, legendary chronographs. Or you could even say the Speedmaster, even though, yes, it's famous for going to the moon at the core of it, it was always intended originally as a racing watch. So among the racing chronographs, this is just something a little bit different and I, I, I find it very refreshing. I think its design is is a, a true work of art, much like the car it's um, made in honor of. So the negatives, well, I've got to say, uh, well, apart from its price, it's around about retail, I think $22,000. Uh, it certainly is worth it. Um, you can't really fathom it until you experience it. I think actually the main negative are the slightly wide lug width here. I feel the strap is a little bit overpowering. For such a refined watch, the fact that the strap doesn't really taper, I feel it loses a little bit of its sophistication there. I just feel that a strap that tapers is more elegant looking. I'm not sure if that's just my personal taste, but you know, look at this lug width, it is quite exaggerated. Although it does assist it being, you know, different, something uh, a little bit out of the norm. The other big negative has got to be said, if you're zooming about in a sports car and you're timing something realistically, the markings are so petite, it is a little bit tricky to read, um, especially if you I mean, imagine you're in a car and the, the vibrations and your watch is doing this. It's sad that the 12 o'clock marker is not a little bit different with the uh, luminescence. It'd be nice to have something to assist its orientation to differentiate the 12 from the other markers. Very small gripe, but other than that, I think Parmigiani are, are onto a winner here. They really are. Certainly a brand I, I hadn't had any experience with so a big shout out to Alfredo again uh, for, for making this happen and of course the wonderful people at Parmigiani. I'd love to see perhaps a rose gold version. I could certainly see this in platinum um, to give it a little bit more weight and heft but then again I totally get it what they're trying to do. Sports cars they're built to be light so they can go faster so you know these subtle nods to automotive design is, is very clever. It's a great balance of something sporty but yet I, I would be quite happy wearing this almost for, for like formal attire. Yeah, I, I, I know it's a faux pas but with a suit it, it would look very dapper indeed. This is an incredibly stylish alternative to the slightly cliched roller Daytona and I do think the essence and personality of the Aerolith car has been captured wonderfully by this watch especially the the dorsal seam of the Bugatti in the lugs is just mesmerizing it's um yeah <laughs> another grail perhaps for the list um yeah god what a watch absolute pure class anyway guys i'm gonna leave it there thank you very very much for watching please don't forget to add your thoughts queries comments opinions all the rest of it down below uh, please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful and i will catch you in the next one okay ciao